So Pokemon Sword and Shield released another Gigantamax trailer not too long ago, and considering that all the forms they showed were for Gen 1 Pokemon, the community reacted about as well as I expected it to. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm sick and tired of the Gen 1 pandering as well. If you haven't heard of the original 151 at this point, you're either in a coma or dead. But I have personally softened on the topic of Gen 1 pandering, because I've realized that Gen 1 pandering is an essential part of how the Pokemon Company actually advertises their games. Keep in mind that this strategy does have a big fire-type named problem with it currently, but I think by talking about the Gigantamax forms, it'll help shed some light on the issue as a whole. So let me explain. Gigantamax Pikachu is the perfect start for this simply because it represents most of what I'm talking about in terms of Gen 1 pandering. Nice. Pikachu is the premier mascot of the Pokemon franchise. You know it, you love it, it's the creme a la creme. If you see any form of advertising for Pokemon worldwide, there are most likely two options. It either has some form of Pikachu in it, or it's a Digimon poster. The rat is everywhere and the sight of it still gets the nostalgia juices flowing to this day. In the Gigantamax form it was given in Sword and Shield only takes more advantage of this. By basing its new Chonk form off of its old Chonk sprite, it reinvigorates the nostalgia for its original Chonk status while still bringing some new Chonk to the table. It's a perfect mixture of incorporating your status as a Gen 1 Pokemon into a design without it feeling overly shoehorned in. But also I got a sickness for that thickness. Damn boy, he's thick. Eevee technically falls under similar territory as it is also a very popular Gen 1 Pokemon, but it only recently got full mascot status thanks to Pokemon Let's Go, and its Gigantamax form sucks anyway, so we don't really care. Hello darkness, my old friend. Gigantamax Butterfree is a much more interesting case for a few reasons. While it is certainly a more popular Pokemon thanks to its role in the original anime, it is still a Mon that generally doesn't see much light of day when it comes to overall Pokemon representation, and it certainly pales in comparison to other more popular Bug-type Pokemon such as Scizor, Heracross, Pinsir, and Volcarona, which makes its new form in Pokemon Sword and Shield all of the more surprising and welcome. Even Beedrill, its Gen 1 contemporary, got a Mega Evolution way before Butterfree, so seeing Butterfree finally get some love from the developers is fantastic. And it shows that even Gen 1 Mons can be forgotten by developers as a whole, so it's good that even a few of these underrated Mons are getting the love. Although I think Venomoth really got screwed here. Hello darkness, my old friend. And honestly, Meowth is just super weird, and I love it. <laughs> It's pretty clear that Meowth is a pretty iconic Mon thanks to the Pokemon anime, and at this point there's very little dispute to its validity as a full-fledged Pokemon mascot. But the sheer confusion this form has caused almost brings back memories of Alolan Executor in Gen 7 and its reveal. It's just such a weird Mon that it's almost impossible not to fall in love with it. <laughs> So a trend you may be seeing here is that although all of these forms are in fact from Kanto, they're either on a dignified mascot Mon who is practically expected to get it at this point, or on a more underrated Mon who probably deserves to get some form of representation even with their Gen 1 status, while all of them have appropriately solid designs. And then there's Charizard. Keep in mind I am not disputing the fact that Charizard is a popular Pokemon because it is. One of the most, in fact. I also think that as a design, the Gigantamax form looks great. It gives an interesting spin on a design we have seen before, whilst feeling fairly distinct from the Mega Evolutions it got in Gen 6. The problem is Charizard is a starter Pokemon. While it is fine that starter Pokemon get some love and representation with Mega's exclusive Z-moves and the like, it only works if it's fair. Yes, Mega Blaziken was a thing that was an X and Y exclusively, but eventually Swampert and Sceptile got their own Mega forms in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And you see, a lot of people love Blastoise and Venusaur, but the fact is that Charizard is consistently getting much more representation than the others. The Gen 1 starters get Megas, Charizard gets two. A new gimmick announced, Charizard gets a new exclusive form for that gimmick, while the others get jack shit. Charizard is even Leon's ace for fuck's sakes. It's clear that there's an imbalance with how one uber popular Mon is getting way too much attention. And that's the problem. 
Sure, it's fine to give attention to Gen 1 Pokemon since it is the essence of how Pokemon games advertise. It's fine to give Gen 1 Pokemon forms. But Pokemon's consistent overloading of Gen 1 has been a serious issue for multiple generations and really came into light in Gen 6. The majority of Mega Evolutions were from Gen 1 before Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out, and the only mons to get exclusive Z-moves outside of Alola were from Gen 1. And we literally just got Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee right before Sword and Shield. Jesus Christ, that's a lot. I do think the existence of Galarian Zigzagoon is a very telling sign that things are finally changing, but this is still such a gigantic issue that likely won't reduce for a while. And it's something I hope that Game Freak is able to fix here after Pokemon Sword and Shield because it is still a very problematic thing. No, but seriously, fuck Charizard.